Hello and welcome to a lecture for the 16th Annual Kosciuszko Chair Conference and the 4th Oscar Halecki Symposium. This year's virtual conference and speakers will focus on the topic of the intermarium and trimarium, concepts and new realities. Today's joint virtual symposium is organized by the Institute of World Politics and the Oscar Halecki Institute in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the passing away of Professor Oscar Halecki. For those who are new, IWP is a graduate school of national security, intelligence, and international affairs. We offer a doctoral program, seven master's degree programs, including two online MAs, and 18 certificates of graduate study. If you're interested in learning more about us, please feel free to visit us at iwp.edu. On behalf of IWP, I'd like to thank all of our supporters who make IWP events possible. Today, we will be hearing from Dr. Thaddeus Gormata, who will deliver a lecture titled Oscar Halecki, a Political Activist. Dr. Thaddeus Vladimir Gormata is a prominent figure born in Pusica, New Jersey, to Polish immigrant parents with a rich cultural heritage and has had an extensive career in academia and community leadership. Dr. Gramada received his MA and PhD in East Central European History from Fordham University under the mentorship of renowned historian Oscar Halecki. Dr. Gramada served as a full professor of modern European history at New Jersey City University and was instrumental in establishing the multi-ethnic and immigration studies program there. Dr. Gramada has also held various roles in the Polish Institute of Arts and Sciences of America, culminating in his tenure as executive director and president, actively fostering academic connections between Polish and American institutions. Dr. Gormada played a pivotal role in expanding the Polish Institute of Arts and Sciences of America, reach by affiliating it with the American Association for the Advancement of Slavic Studies organizing scholarly conferences and strengthening ties with other ethnic groups. Additionally, he has facilitated collaborations with Polish academic and cultural organizations, resulting in the development of professional archives and library resources. Under his leadership, the Polish Institute of Arts and Sciences of America successfully paid off its mortgage and established cordial relations with the Polish Embassy and Consulate General. Dr. Goramada's contributions were recognized through various awards and honors, including the Commander's Cross of Merit from Poland, solidifying his legacy as a dedicated scholar and cultural ambassador. Please welcome Professor Thaddeus Goramada. And my PhD degree in 1966, from Fordham University under the mentorship of Haleski. Now, now, Oscar Haleski is not generally perceived as a political activist. He was, however, not locked in a ivory tower, unaware of the reality surrounding him. On the contrary, he was a historian who shared E.H. Carr's view that history was a continuous dialogue between the past and the present. So he was interested in the present as well as the Middle Ages, Renaissance, uh, though, even though he was a specialist. Above all, he was a Christian humanist, deeply concerned about his nation, his church, his civilization, and the future of humanity. He felt he had a responsibility when uh, the uh, truth and freedom were endangered. There was no dichotomy between his personal and professional life. He really was very, never able to isolate himself in an ivory tower. He was always ready to serve his 
phenomenal, with his phenomenal talents as a polyglot and his incredible intelligence for his country's needs and for issues dealing with freedom. He had no concern that such activity might endanger his academic career, private life. Today, I would like to concentrate on his heroic periods after World War I and World War II. When Poland recovered her independence in 1918, following the World War I and the creation of the League of Nations, his already brilliant academic cre uh, career was suspended. The young 27-year-old Halecki was appointed Secretary General of Poland's Bureau in Foreign Ministry dealing with the League of Nations Affairs. He strongly supported Woodrow Wilson's policies. That is, Halecki supported the principle of collective security and therefore opposed the balance of power system. <clears throat> the League of Nations was to be the guarantor of independence for the newly created uh, East European countries. <clears throat> In the years 1921-24, Halewski was appointed the first secretary of the International Election and this Intellectual Commission and persuaded such icons as Marie Skodowska Curie and Albert Einstein to become its members. Next, between 1925-1926, Halewski became chairman of the League's section that dealt with encouraging contacts and cooperation among nations. Poland's government appointed him delegate to its Bureau of Foreign Propaganda. When one examines his notes, you find scrupulous listing of daily activities astounding number of lectures delivered not just in Poland, but in Paris, Brussels, Milan, Geneva, and Vienna. His appearance were not only to advance a positive image of Poland, but to support the work of the League of Nations. During these active periods, Halewski had the opportunity to meet and even befriend such highly distinguished European intellectuals like H.M. Schmidt, Alphonse Dubs, Charles Deal, Pierre Redovan, Henri Piren, Francesco Ruffini, Albert Toynbee. These contacts made Halecki a European historian, not just a Polish historian. He was able to make Poland visible in the history of Europe. In 1938, Halecki visited America on the invitation of Stefan Mierzwa, president of the Kosciuszko Foundation in New York. He came in like a hurricane from October 2nd to December 13th. He delivered uh, 44 lectures, mostly at major American universities from New York to Milwaukee, Cambridge, Washington. This was the time of the Munich crisis and a shameful appeasement of Hitler. 
Alaski had many opportunities of always spent. Alaski, unfortunately, uh, did not have to wait very long to return to America. <clears throat> the outbreak of World War II in 1939 was a great tragedy for Poland. Luckily, Halecki was able to find refuge in, in America, thanks to Stefan Mierzwa, president of the Kosciuszko Foundation. He made the arrangements for travel from Portugal to New York City in 1942. <laughs> Halatsky was not an unknown in America and was able to quickly renew his activism together with five members of the Polska Akademia Umienoshi, that is the Polish Academy of Arts and Sciences, created the Polish Institute of Arts and Sciences in May 1942. Thanks to the financial and moral support of the Polish government in exile, based in London, where General Sikorski had his head, it was no surprise that Halecki was elected as the first executive director of the Polish Institute and its spiritual movements for the next 25 years until his death 50 years ago on September 17, 1973. <laughs> at the inaugural meeting of the Institute at Pierpont Morgan Library in New York City on uh, May 14, 1942, Rodisa <laughs> World fame, famed anthropologist, the first president, stressed the scholarly character of the Institute, uh, which will be dedicated exclusively to intellectual and cultural matters. We could only wonder how Halecki found the energy to actively lead the Polish Institute while also on the faculty of Fordham University in New York City. Speaking at 21 colleges and universities in May 1943, Halaski, together with Albert Einstein at Carnegie Hall, commemorated the 600, the 400 rather, anniversary of the death of Nicholas Copernicus, Nikolai Copernic. He helped to organize the uh, Canadian branch of the Polish Institute. One should not forget his appearances at the Daughters of American Revolution, Rotary Clubs, YMCA, Knights of Columbus, Council of Foreign Relations. Aletsky's greatest achievement while in the United States was to make American and Western European historians aware that they were distorting general history of Europe by ignoring and disregarding the role of East Central European nations. <laughs> His first <laughs> developed systematically in his limits and divisions in European history, the thesis that Western Europe and Eastern Europe is no less European than Western Europe. <clears throat> they both alike are in integral parts of one great, both alike, <coughs> uh, in the same, sharing the same spiritual traditions, same cultural traditions. He also rejected the popular view in America and Western Europe 
Then I identified the history of Eastern Europe with the history of Russia, while considering the non-Russian part of Eastern Europe as a as an appendix to be included only on the grounds that it will help give a more complete understanding of Russia. Alesky was able to begin the slow but steady process of revising of revising European history in America as well as in Western Europe by his prolific publications at the, in the English language as well as by his effective teaching at Fordham at Columbia University. His influence was felt in the major academic journals as a member of editorial boards and contributor to the Slavic Review and the Journal of Central Europe Affairs and other journals. Aletsky was more than a historian. He was, he, he was a philosopher of history. Yes, he was a great Polish patriot with strong mystical feelings for, for Poland. But he was not a narrow nationalist. In his classes, I heard him lecture on the importance of the Europeans developing a supranational consciousness with federal organizations that would reconcile two great ideas, national self-determination <coughs> and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the international cooperation. So he was a European, he believed in pluralism with unity. To him, the, the essence of European civilization is its inherent pluralism. Aleski initiated, he rather insisted that he also thought that Poles should be genuinely concerned for the welfare of our Eastern neighbors, Ukraine, Lithuania, Belarus, who once were associated with the Polish Republic. It is certainly true <coughs> that Haletsky was a devout Catholic and even a saintly individual, but he respected religious diversity, was a firm believer in ecumenism, in his book, From Florence to Brest, 1439-1596, it's clear that although he believed in the reunion of Latin and Greek churches, he also believed the Eastern churches should remain, should retain their identities, preserve the traditions, rites, and liturgies. I'm also struck by Haleski's view that America was of vital importance to Poland and to Europe. <clears throat> he was a keen observer when he started in his book, Millennium of Europe, that America was moving away from melting pot concept to cultural pluralism. He perceived a historical process that would eventually create a new Atlantic community that he called Euro-America, a community made safe for free, uh, for national diversity and inalienable rights of the human persons. Polish Americans and other Euro American ethnic groups have an important role to play in the creation of this community. According to this imminent Polish historian, Halinski's vision of history was not utopian, but always contained a note of hope <clears throat> that uh, were expressed 
by the late John Paul II in his encyclical Fides et Ratio. Even at the height of the Cold War in the 1960s, Halesky never lost hope for peace and freedom would come to Poland and the nations of East Central Europe. Not as a result of a human price of another war, but as a result of moral power and peaceful methods. Halitsky's life, teaching, lecturing, researching, writing and publishing books, articles in America for over 30 years have greatly enriched and broadened American historical scholarship. His many students at Fordham and Columbia, as well as those historians and students who read his works or heard his lectures, have been greatly influenced by him. They admire him for his erudition and very, very high academic uh, value standards. They will never forget him, nor the great values and traditions he championed, which are based on freedom and respect for the human individual personality. Poles and persons of Polish origin cannot afford to forget the memory of the one of Poland's greatest sons. May his memory endure forever. Aletsky was indeed a soldier of liberty. Thank you.